Good day. A well-designed chart of account and general ledger is at the front and center of any good ERP solution. Having the ability to configure the structure of the chart of accounts is a major benefit to the organization and utilizing sub-accounts in the process gives heaps of additional flexibility. In MOB Advanced, the sub-accounts look like individual accounts but are controlled by the main accounts, letting you switch focus within each major account. In this training video, we will have a closer look at the configuration of sub-accounts, maintaining sub-accounts and entering data in the system using sub-accounts. We'll also review the use of sub-accounts in financial reporting. First, let's have a quick overview of our chart of accounts. For this, let's navigate from the Finance module and under Profiles, select Chart of Accounts. The account number is the unique identifier of the general ledger account in the system. And in our setup, you'll notice the account number in the first column, consisting of six digits. We also have our account types in here, asset, liability, income and expense types. So in a case where we would like to view these accounts across more dimensions, and split into further detail, that is where we'll be making use of sub-accounts. Let's look at the sub-account structure defined for our company. For this, we'll navigate to sub-accounts under the profile section. Note the structure of our sub-accounts in this case. It consists of a three-digit segment and a two-digit segment. To see how the sub-accounts are configured, let's navigate to more items and click on the configuration tile and then select Segmented Keys. In the ID field, we'll select Subaccount from the list. We can see that our subaccount consists of a three-digit segment for department and a two-digit segment for area. If we want to view the values for any of these segments, we can simply click on the applicable segment and then select View Segment from the toolbar. The Segment Value screen will open and from here, we can view and maintain the values for the selected segments. If we would like to add a new segment value, we can simply click on the Add Row option and type in a value consisting of three digits and enter in a description. Once done, we can save these changes. Now we've added a new value for segment one. From here, we can access the values for segment two by changing the segment ID to two. This will display the list of values for our area segment. And again from here, we can maintain and add new values for this segment. Let's just navigate back to the segmented keys form for a moment. Now, let's look at the lookup mode field and the checkbox to the bottom of this that allows adding new values on the fly. These two fields go together and it has to do with the mode the system uses to look up the objects when a user is typing the identifier in a box on a data entry form. The mode selected here will affect the availability of the Allow Adding New Values on the Fly checkbox. If the Buy segment All Available Segment Values option is selected, the user will enter an identifier segment by segment. Here, the user can click on the first segment and then hit F3. This will open the list of segment values from where a value can be selected. When this mode is selected, the Allow Adding New Values on the Fly checkbox becomes selected by default. This functionality, when this checkbox is checked here, it allows the user to enter a new segment value while entering a transaction. This means that the combination of sub-accounts does not have to pre-exist in the system. MOB Advanced will build them for us on the fly. For this functionality to work, remember to clear the validate box for all segments of the key. If the buy segmented key option is selected, the user needs to enter the entire identifier. The system will display the list of existing identifiers and the user can select from the list. With this option, the allow adding new values on the fly checkbox will be unavailable for selection. For the purposes of this video, we'll use the buy segment option. Let's save our changes now. Let's look at how we get to our sub-account options when entering transactions. For this, let's navigate to the Finance module and from the Transactions section, select Journal Transactions. Then click on New. Let's add a line and select Company Advertising Expense as our main account. 
you'll notice that the sub account field is also required here. So let's say that with this journal, we would like to remove an amount of $400 from the human resources department in the consulting training area and put it against the marketing department for the same area. So when we're on the first segment of our sub account, we can simply hit our F3 key and a list of all our department segment values will display. So from this list, let's select HMR for the human resources department. The system automatically moves us to the next segment. Now we can simply hit F3 again and select CG for the consulting training area. Because we want to move the amount out of this department, we'll credit this line with the $400. Our debit entry should equal our credit entry. So let's add another line now and select the same main account for company advertising expense. The sub account field will now be pre-populated with the values of our first line entry. Because we want to remove the amount from the HR department and put it against the marketing department, for our debit entry, we will overwrite the department segment of our sub account. So let's hit F3 and select marketing. The area segment remains unchanged for this exercise and the amount will default in the debit amount column. Now we can enter a description. And we're good to go. From the form toolbar, we can save the changes. Once we've set up and used our SAP accounts in transactions, we can start generating financial reports based on these SAP accounts. When we open the profit and loss report from the finance main menu under the financial statements section, You'll notice that we have the ability to specify sub accounts as report parameters, which will separate and filter the data in the reports according to the selected sub accounts. Next, we'll look at the trial balance report. From the report section on the finance main menu, let's select the trial balance detailed report. We'll leave the parameters as is for now and just run the report. Note how this report displays the balances for accounts, including the sub account details. And lastly, we will look at sub accounts in inquiries. For this, let's navigate from the finance main menu to inquiries and then select account by sub account. This form provides information about activities on the selected account broken down by sub account. When we enter our main account for company advertising, the account balances and debit and credit totals broken down by SAP account will display in the table. And this brings us to the end of our overview of SAP accounts in the MOB Advanced system. Please let us know with your feedback and join us again for more as we explore MOB Advanced through our training videos. Thank you for watching.